Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking with John Murphy, Financial Empowerment Center Director. We're talking about Metro's Financial Empowerment Centers, learning who comes there. Uh, they've been around for three years. They uh, help a lot of people. Um, and I, as we got through kind of setting the table there off top, we got into some of the things that put people in great financial peril or debt. Housing, a big one. On this show, I've always been interested in affordable housing. It's a huge issue in the, in the campaign and everything. Mm -hmm. So the people that come through your door, that again are smart enough to seek help, how many of them, how, how big a deal is housing? Is that, is that, a, is that one of the biggest problems? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's, there's two problems. One is, is the client that is cost burdened because of their housing, the cost of their housing. An extreme cost burden would be about 70% of their, of their take home pay would be spent on housing. That's extremely that cost burdened. That would be burdened. very, because what's, what's the rate supposed to be? Is it a third? It's, or? it's third. So about 30% is what you should be spending. Most, most experts would say about 30% on housing is what you should be spending. And I think a lot of people spend more than that. A, a vast majority spend more than that. Right. Um, it, it typically averages about 50 to 60 percent of someone's take-home pay is spent on housing. Um, and I would have to ask you know, some of my colleagues specifically about areas of, of Nashville because it is broken up into, into census track. Um, but then there's the client who doesn't have any housing, um, who is renting, um, but it's also a cost burden by the rental cost. Um, it's really that client that we see a lot of. It's the banked or underbanked that want to have home ownership, that want to build their assets, that want to have more more wealth, um, and be when able. When you to, say the banked or underbanked, yeah. what does that mean? So, so an unbanked individual would would likely be using, if we took a snapshot of that individual, would be using some type of deferred presentment, um, or it's the colloquial term, payday lender or title loan. Um, so they can't get a, a bank account. They can't get a savings account. And it's not because, it's not because they're not trying. Is right. that true? The right. bank won't give them right. so, a bank account. So most, uh, most often it's going to be if they're using a deferred presentment or a payday lender um, it's because their credit score or their you know is, as we like to when we do presentations um, we, we talk about credit scores as the trustworthy score um, and a lot of banks depending on toxic credit or low credit um, won't bank an individual if they feel that there's that trustworthy score is not high enough um, and that's why it's important that we um, educate about the importance of having a bank account, having a safe and appropriate bank account. Um, and, and that's why I'm actually particularly excited about the Mayor's um, Youth Opportunity um, Initiative that um, we are, are going to have more summer internships, more job opportunities, more economic opportunity for young people. And we're going to talk about the importance of having a bank account and of having direct deposit with those young people because starting them early and understanding the relationship of what to spend that first paycheck on and how to make those sound financial decisions, um, we believe will set them up for future success and opportunity. Has it become more difficult, in your opinion, to get a bank account? Have banks made it more difficult? It seems like now I hear more that there are people that are forced into payday lending because they can't get a bank account. So I'm wondering, was it always so, or have banks made it harder? Do they have higher qualifications that they they look for what, what's what's going on well I think o overall I think the there are banking products that 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 you know a, a lot of folks could take advantage of and, and do take advantage of um, and that open up um, there are some banking products that have different criteria um, there are there is an initiative called bank on which was started out of San Francisco, which has now gone national, that um, the Cities for Financial uh, Empowerment Fund, um, which are good partners of ours, um, is looking to expand. Um, and those bank on uh, accounts have to have certain criteria. Um, low transactional costs, uh, direct deposit, um, low um, account establishment fees, um, you know, you know, for 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 those that are youth, having the opportunity to open a bank account um, with a uh, alternative form of ID rather than a driver's license. Um, so there are a number of criteria um, that that Nashville is doing good, and that our financial institutions are 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 working on to develop the products that are appropriate for you know all different consumers. 
But when you start talking about, okay, don't spend more than a third of your income on housing. Okay, I get that. But it's so much more basic to get a bank account. And so if you're not able to get that, I mean, that's, that's, that's rough. Yeah. And I don't, that's a tough thing to get out of. And you're saying the way to get out of it is to raise your credit score. But there are a ton of people. I mean, I wonder what the percentage of people in Davidson County who can't, who don't have access to a bank account, who couldn't get it if they walked into a bank at all. And that's the reason why, you know, we want to maintain and sustain the Financial Empowerment Center. Um, because the, the rate of individuals coming into the Financial Empowerment Center um, that are banked or underbanked, um, when they're working with a financial counselor, we see the turnover of an individual getting to being banked, getting to a safe banking program uh, or account, um, and starting to see our saving metrics go up. So since the inception of the Financial Empowerment Center, we've been able to reduce debt by $4.5 million and increase savings by $700,000. And this is at a starting point of an average of someone coming in with $10,000 in debt. So when we're putting all of this together, you can really see the level of impact that a program like this can have on a community um, and empowering those individuals to make sound financial decisions not only benefits you know, Davidson County for increased taxpayers, but it increases our overall financial um, system by having more individuals to take advantage of goods and services and increase our economic inclusion um, and, and opening up the doors of economic opportunity. So my more direct question, getting back to what we were talking about, when you talk about banked versus non-banked, have banks made it harder? Is it, is it harder to get a bank account than it used to be? Because it seems like, as I was saying before, I didn't hear about so many people not having a bank account. So do you blame banks? Do they have some role in this? No, I think I mean the financial institutions and the financial sector is is I think inherently complex. I think finance in general has become more complex, especially since two thousand and eight. I think banks are certainly less willing to 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 take chances. Um, but I think overall, what we're seeing, especially with bake on pro programs, are banks evaluating how we can provide products to consumers um, that that you know need these types of bank accounts. Um, as it's it's funny the the, the president's um, council for financial capability had uh, their um, uh, advisory committee meeting, and someone said on their you know. Financial, you know, empowerment, financial capability is, as at its core, kind of simple. You spend less than you make, you save, and you diversify. If you take those three steps, then you're generally going to be in, you know, financial stability. But how to do those things is a complex. How to go about choosing the right products is complex, um, and how we empower our our, our community to make the appropriate decisions is incredibly complex. So you're looking at people, again, the banked and non-banked. So that's, that's issue number one. Then you said a big concern is people that don't own their home, but they're renting. And, and we're seeing a lot of hurt there. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, so, you know, in terms of the housing market, um, what financial empowerment how we are advantaged by the Financial Empowerment um, Center is, is, is individuals that are currently renting that want to, want to get to home ownership um, can work with financial counselors on putting their financial house in order, work on appropriate strategies to improve their, their credit score, to increase their savings, to get to the point where they can apply for certain other programs that, that are afforded to individuals that want to go through home ownership. Um, and likewise, for that homeowner who now might be house burdened or cost burdened by, by home ownership, um, that individual can, can uh, look at their financial situation and find out how they get to more stability. So I think rents are high in Nashville. And I think that would be a really hard situation for a lot of people. They're, they're, they can't own a home, so then they're renting. I mean, what, what, what are you seeing as far as rents? What are, what are, they're not a ton of bargains out there. And yeah. so when you see people, you, you said it's the, what, a third of your income. 
generally and experts. Most suppose. people yeah. are way above that. You think it's more than half people are above that statistically. Yeah. And a lot of the people are renting, which makes it even tougher because they're not building equity. That's right. So what do we do about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think from the policy side, you know, I think the mayor has taken the appropriate steps to improve the, the Barnes um, Housing Trust Fund, um, that there is dedication on in, in improving and increasing units, but also while retaining units, having a sound strategy that, that funds creation of units, that preserves units, that retains units, and that allows individuals to stay in their homes, um, and that builds units. Uh, you know, where we can leverage our existing resources, like the community, the, the Financial Empowerment Center, um, is where that policy, where our program makes sense and fitting in. It's hard from a policy standpoint um, to affect price. A lot of the times the market drives the price. And the market's booming. And the yeah, market's what are you going to do? You can't say, you can't sell it for that. Somebody but, will pay for right. it. Right. Yeah. But, but from a retention standpoint, if we're looking at, at, at either home retention or an individual that, that needs to have more support for, for staying in their rental unit, um, the understanding, being empowered to make those sound financial decisions is where we come in. Personal finance is really just that. It's personal. And an individual can only make the appropriate decisions when they've been empowered and educated to do so. And that's what you think the big thing is. They, they haven't, if people, they want to buy this new car, they want to buy the nicer house, they fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. But there's, when you talk about literacy, people haven't, they just don't know. There's some basic things they don't know. Right. Those would almost be like tricks. Yeah. Well, you know, I think well, if we look at, you know, the whole financial ecosystem from, you know, an, uh, a, a child that learns about dollars and cents, which actually is mostly no longer taught anymore. Um, which is kind of crazy, which right? Is, which is, yeah, it's, that's it's pretty, pretty crazy. That is, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not good. But okay, go ahead. So, so and this actually t takes us back to, to, um, to GFLEC and, and Anna Maria Lusardi, who's really a leader in this. She has a quote that I, that I you know, routinely say to really drive home this point. Uh, financial literacy is as important today as, it, as the ability to read and write was at the turn of the Industrial Revolution. If we juxtapose the two, the, the, the two eras, financial literacy in today's complex financial institute or financial system uh, is how an individual creates stability, who creates security, and often when you're talking about wealth building and wealth management, that's how people really start seeing generational wealth building. Um, and, and so it's incredibly important. So from our whole ecosystem, from financial literacy, you know, in a formal education setting, to financial empowerment, being taught to, to adults and to parents um, and individuals, um, whether it's through a you know, private-public partnership like the FEC or another you know, social service delivery system, um, all the way to capability. What are the barriers to those individuals utilizing the education and the, and the empowerment that they have? Um, all of that whole ecosystem is, is predicated on education and empowering people to make those decisions. We have to take a break. And then I want to talk about the, the age of the people that come through the door there. Um, what are we talking about? All right, but we'll take a break. If you want to call, there's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.